what we're going to do through this channel is show you things that you can do that are not going to cost you the earth, that are not going to cost you a fortune. Okay, there'll be things that cost money, but they'll be excellent value for money. Hi, we're Dizzy and Bex, and this is De Niro. Come with us as we explore Scotland on a shoestring. Today, for our adventures, we're off to explore Bowness. Where's that? I'm glad you asked. Well, granted, maybe it's not everybody's first choice for a tourist destination, but believe me, it's well worth a visit. There's lots to see, lots to do, and none of it is going to break the bank. Look, there's a railway museum and a motor museum. I bet you weren't expecting that. If you're so inclined, you can cycle to Bowness along the John Muir Way. This goes from Helensborough on the west coast all the way to the town of Dunbar on the east, which was John Muir's birthplace. The route is really well signposted, so even we would have a hard time getting lost. The River Forth at Bowness is famous for its mudflats, which provide a haven for all sorts of wildlife, because let's face it, you'd have to be a pretty brave predator to try and get out to where these birds are. There's a pretty view for you, but enough of the view, we've got exploring to do. Right, let's head down onto the beach, this could be a bit of a challenge. Wish me luck! Yeah, that wasn't the easiest way to get down to the beach. Uh, we actually found out later on there's a little flight of stairs a bit further. But is it really an adventure if you're not risking life and limb? Well, risking life and limb wasn't for Bex and De Niro. They were far too sensible and they came down the wee flight of stairs. One of the great things about the beach at Bowness is the amount of old pottery that you find. Bowness was a major centre of production for the Scottish pottery industry and today it's almost all gone, apart from the bits you can still find washed in by the tide. De Niro seems to have settled right into his life as a pet, and he's slowly getting used to the fact that not all dogs are greyhounds. When we first got him, if something wasn't a greyhound, he would just stand absolutely stock still, terrified of it. No matter how big, or in most cases small, it was. We don't really do art, but that's quite an arty shot. I like that. I like this place. I like this beach. Although it is, to be fair, a bit cold today. It's also quite a good beach for driftwood, but we did think this bit was probably a bit big for taking home, although De Niro would have probably tried. You just can't beat walking on a beach. It doesn't cost anything, and you never know what you're going to find. Every beach is different, everywhere you go has got a different atmosphere, a different vibe, and if you've got a dog, then a beach is the only place to go because dogs love the beach. And if you're looking for the perfect beach gift for a loved one, how about a brick? Nothing says I've been on holiday quite like a brick. Although De Niro has settled in brilliantly since we got him from the Greyhound Rescue Centre a few weeks ago, he's still not sure about busy places and big crowds of people, so we decided discretion being the better part of valour. Bex would take the dog back home while I went off to explore the town of Bowness. As with any life on the beach, you've got to keep an eye on the weather and what the tide's doing. This was blue skies and sunshine not 10 minutes ago and now it's looking a bit... Oh, uh, looking a bit... I know what we need. We need a word to describe this. What we need is our word of the day. The old cliche says, it's nice weather for the ducks. And there's the ducks enjoying the nice weather. Any centre of industry can only be a centre of industry if it has a way to get its stuff out. Bowness was well served by both railway and by the sea. This is the town's old harbour from which coal and iron and pottery would have been shipped over the whole of the British Empire. At one point, believe it or not, this was the fourth busiest harbour in Scotland. Those days are sadly long behind it. It's also where shopping trolleys go to die. You do wonder what mighty trade ships once tied up at these moorings. This place must have been absolutely bustling back when Bowness was at its peak. If you do want to explore a little bit further afield, you can hire a bike in Bowness from the Fourth Bike Scheme. It's all part of the Fourth Environmental Link Initiative, which lets you scoot backwards and forwards along the John Muir Way. Sounds good to us. It's all very well signposted, so quite difficult to get lost. 
you can try. There are all sorts of little reminders of the town's former glories like this, the old Victorian customs house that would have made sure that the money that was due to the government went to the government from every ship that arrived or departed. There are large parts of Bowness that probably look exactly the same as it did back in the town's heyday. History above your head and under your feet. This big wheel is Bowness's memorial to mining. The town has a coal mining tradition that goes back to the 8th century when the monks of Holyrood in Edinburgh were given permission to mine at Carradon. Scotland's industrial revolution was largely fuelled by coal from the Bowness coalfield and there were several pits around and even in the town itself which must have added to the general ambience. Perhaps Bowness's best known tourist attraction is the Steam Railway which is also the home to the Scottish Railway Museum. This place is well worth a visit. To be honest we've never been here before and unfortunately after today we still haven't. <laughs> And our 10 year old boy is devastated. And although the weather was a bit dreech, this little guy made us smile. Who would have thought at the end of the rainbow was Bowness? Can't beat a little bit of background, so here for you is a wee bit of history. Bowness was a very different looking place back in its industrial heyday. The docks were buzzing and everywhere was the sights, sounds and no doubt smells of heavy industry. The place would have been permanently shrouded in soot and smog and just not nice. But you could have bought a house next to an iron furnace, that would be, uh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Or how about a coal mine? Lots of coal mines, pick the prettiest. Or then there's a sought after gasworks neighbourhood, which sounds nice, and then you could go for a wee drink for the distillery, get yourself a wee dram. Best of all would be the fourth chemical in your work, so that sounds like a great place to live. Before we head to Keneal House, we have a small confession to make. May have slightly exaggerated the views that you get from Bowness. Certainly, if you look to the east, you see the Forth Bridges, and if you look across the Forth, you see the rolling hills and the pretty scenery. But unfortunately, if you look to the west, you see this. That is Grangemouth Petrochemical Plant, and by no stretch of the imagination is that a pretty view. But there are more than enough pretty views to make up for it. Right, that's us done with uh, Bowness. We're now going to get in the car and we're going to scoot along to Keneal to look at the big house, and the big park and the wee museum. And having seen how the, the people in the town would have lived with the coal mines and the iron foundries and the potteries, we're now going to see how the other half, well the other top of the top 1% lived in their big houses away from the grime and the filth in the mud. The big house at Keneal was the home to the Hamilton family, one of the many that they had across Scotland, and over the years it gradually fell into disrepair until the 1930s it was going to be demolished. The 16th century mansion was granted a reprieve when some of the finest Renaissance wall paintings in Scotland were discovered, or rather rediscovered, inside it. It's only when you step back from the house. I know when you're up close to it it doesn't look very pretty, but the further back you go and the more you soak in its general appearance you realise it's really, really not a pretty building. One name associated with Keneal, who you might not expect, is legendary Scottish engineer James Watt. Watt was brought here in secret to work on his steam engine, and in 1768 this little workshop was built. You would imagine it was built to be far enough away from the main house that if anything went catastrophically wrong, it would only damage Watt, the building, and whatever he was working on. This is a wee museum on site, and it's pretty good. It's got Roman bits and pieces and some pottery, and it's uh, worth a visit. There are some really nice pieces of pottery in here. We find little bits down on the beach, but here you actually see what the things would look like originally. Unfortunately, we weren't brave enough to ask if we could try on this Roman helmet. The museum is small, but it's definitely well worth a visit, especially as it's free. And you can go upstairs and you can meet Mr. Hedgehog and Mr. Badger in all their stuffed glory. So, as we head away from Keneal, Hopefully we've shown you that Bowness is worth a visit. It's uh, a nice wee tune and it's got some really interesting things to see. Now at this point we were supposed to be heading for home, but then we had a better idea. Let's go up to Stirling, have a wee run round the town and then let's go exploring, looking for more stuff that we can feature in the future when we come back in more detail. And when we got there, Stirling had arranged a nice fog for us to give the place a bit of ambience. Well, we gave you a new word earlier of Drich. Behind me, believe it or not, is the magnificent edifice of Stirling Castle, a place that is steeped in Scottish history and at the very heart of our nation. You'll have to take my word for it because it's hidden in the mist, but apparently that's not mist, that's atmosphere. So it's very, very atmospheric. De Niro's loving it. He's uh, listening with half an ear, which is about all he ever gives us.
name inextricably linked with Stirling Castle is that of King Robert the Bruce, King of the Scots and defeater of the English at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. You can see him peering out over Stirling, which he can't see either because of this mist. This video is mostly featuring mist. Yeah, this was a day that was not short on atmosphere. Who knows what these narrow lanes and streets have seen, who knows what stories they could tell. But as we pan down here you get a cracking view of the general ambience and then you get a nice view of the pyramid. Yes, the pyramid. There is a pyramid. Now you may not think of a pleasure ground as being between a castle and a graveyard, but this is where Drummond's pleasure ground was built by Mr Drummond as a monument to himself. Drummond's tomb is also in the pleasure ground, so if you're passing by you can stop in and say hello. We're just amazed he didn't go the whole hog and have himself buried in his pyramid. We do always try to pop round and see any war graves in the area as well. These simple white headstones are looked after by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and they do an amazing job. Okay, it may be grey and it may be dreek, but there's something incredibly emotive about old graveyards, especially when the weather's like this. You get a real sense of atmosphere and ghosts, but mostly atmosphere. So that's it, Stirling's old graveyard. I resisted the temptation to say it's the dead centre of town or that people are dying to get in here. Sorry, Stirling has got to be one of the most beautiful and historic places in the world. Everywhere you go there's actual history that you can reach out and you can touch and you can walk through and you can look at. The castle's a major part of it, the castle's the big attraction, but the castle's also not cheap. If you've got a family and you want to go there it's going to be quite expensive. What we're going to do through this channel is show you things that you can do that are not going to cost you the earth, that are not going to cost you a fortune. Okay there'll be things that cost money but there'll be excellent value for money. It's okay paying to get in somewhere if you can be there for hours, but there's nothing worse than paying again somewhere and it all being over in five minutes. So as we leave the windy streets of Stirling behind, it just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching and we hope you've enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe and all that gubbins and we'll take you on more adventures on the cheap with Scotland on a shoestring.